Welcome to Electro Online. Here's another viewer request video. It deals with a projectile. We have projectile motion. An object is fired out at some unknown speed and unknown angle in such a way that four and a half seconds later, and I guess I didn't put it on the diagram, T equals 4.5 seconds, it lands on top of a nine meter high hill 95 meters away. And you're supposed to find the initial velocity and the initial angle. And there's actually a very interesting way of solving this problem, so we're going to use this special technique. This is how we do that. So we're going to come up with the equation of motion, one of the three equations of kinematics, for both the x and the y direction. So let's do that. So in the y direction, we use y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Now when we plug in the values for the equation, it looks as follows. The final height will be 9. The initial height starts at 0. Initial velocity in the y direction, I've already put the x and y components here. We have plus v initial times the sine of theta times the time minus 4.9 t squared. All right, so that's the equation we have in the y direction. Let's do the same for the x direction. So in the x direction, the equation of motion looks just the same. We use x instead of y, so we have x equals x sub naught plus v sub naught in the x direction times time plus one half a t squared. We have an acceleration in the x direction. Of course, in projectile motion, there is no acceleration in the x direction, so this term goes to zero, and we can assume that we start at x sub naught equals zero there as well, so that goes to zero as well, and the equation becomes the distance x, which is known, that would be 95, is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction, that's this component, v initial times the cosine of theta times time, and that's it. So here are the two equations that are derived from the first equation of kinematics, one for the y direction and one for the x direction. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to solve both of these equations for v initial times the cosine of theta and v initial times the sine of theta and get everything else on the other side. And there's a reason why we're doing that. So here, that's relatively easy. We just divide both sides by t, we get 95 divided by t is equal to v initial times the cosine of theta. So now we have the equation written like this. We have the two unknowns, v initial and theta on one side and everything else on the other side. We're going to do the same with that equation. So first, we're going to move this over to the left side and then divide both sides by t. So we end up with 9 plus 4.9t squared divided by t. And that is equal to v initial times the sine of theta. Of course, I didn't plug in t yet. We know that t is 4.5, so we can do that as well. But notice what we're going to do next. We now have the two equations written like this. We're going to take this equation and divide it by this equation. That way, the v initials cancel out, and the sine by the cosine can be replaced by the tangent. So let's do that. So here we end up with, and I'm going to turn the equation around, so we have v initial times the sine of theta equals, that's this right here, equals this side, so it's going to be 9 plus 4.9, 4.9t squared. Now let's replace what t is equal to, t is 4.5, so that would be 4.5 squared divided by t, which is 4.5. And the whole thing, so that's the first equation. Now we divide it by this equation right here. So we divide the left side by v initial times the cosine of theta. And on the right side, we divide this by 95 divided by 4.5. Now, on the right side, notice we have the numerator divided by 4.5. We have the denominator divided by 4.5. So those both cancel out. That makes it easier. So now we have v initial times the sine of theta divided by v initial times the cosine of theta is equal to 9 plus 4.9 times 4.5 squared divided by 95. So now we can simplify that. Notice on the left side, v initials cancelled out 
and sine divided by cosine is theta is a tangent, so we have the tangent of theta is equal to, let's solve what's on the right side. So we end up with uh, 4.5 squared times 4.9 plus 9 divided by 9.5 equals n, oh, divided by 10 because it's actually 95. So I get 1.104. 1.1043. I think that's plenty of significant and insignificant uh, decimal places. And so now we can write that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 1.1043. So let's take the inverse tangent of that, and we get the angle theta is equal to 47.84 degrees. So there we go. We have the first of the two unknowns. Now to get the second unknown, the velocity, well, we can use probably the easy equation right there. So here we can say that V initial times the cosine of theta is equal to 95 divided by 4.5. But now, of course, we know what the cosine of theta is. So we have V initial is equal to 95 divided by 4.5 and divided by the cosine of the angle 47.84 degrees. Like that. And so now we can also calculate the initial velocity. So we take the cosine of that, multiply times 4.5, bring it to the numerator, and I'll multiply times 95. And let's see here, let me try that again 47.84. I take the cosine of that times 4.5, take the inverse of that and multiply times 95 equals, and we get V initial is equal to 31.45 meters per second. And so that's how we find the initial angle and the initial velocity. Now, we should try to see if we can figure out a way to check that. We can check that by, let's see here. Hmm, well, we know the time. Can we multiply that? Can we see that this equals that? So let's, let's uh, do a quick check. So we want to know if the distance equals the initial velocity in the x direction times time, which is equal to v in the x direction times time. And so in this case, uh, well, hang on. That's v times the cosine of theta times time, like this. And so we have the initial velocity of 31.45 multiply times the cosine of 47.84 and then multiply times 4.5 and if that equals 95 we did the problem correctly so let's try that so 31.45 times 47.84 take the cosine of that times 4.5 equals and i get exactly 95 meters Oop, that should be an m there so it looks like we did do the problem correctly. And so again, what's the nice trick I was referring to, the special technique? You solve the equation kinematics in the x direction, you solve in the y direction, and then you solve both equations for the unknown velocity times the cosine of theta, the unknown velocity times the sine of theta, and then you divide the one equation by the other to get the tangent of theta, the v sub naughts drop out right here, and on the right side, all the things are known. So then you get the angle using the inverse tangent, and then you find the initial velocity. It's an interesting problem and an interesting way to solve the problem. That is how it's done. Did you have to find the maximum potential energy? Oh, I forgot something, didn't I? Yes, <laughs> the maximum potential energy. All right, so what we can see here is that at some point we reach the maximum height. At that maximum height, h max, at that point we have the maximum potential energy, max potential energy. So how do we find the maximum potential energy? Well, we can do that by saying that the kinetic energy in the y direction completely converts to potential energy. Not the whole kinetic energy, but only the kinetic energy in the y direction, which is of course determined by the initial velocity in the y direction. So, um, running out of room here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase some of this. And my initial velocity was 31.45, I believe, right? My velocity 
the initial was equal to 31.45 meters per second. I believe that was correct. Okay, so what we can say is that the kinetic energy initial in the y direction equals the final potential energy. Okay, so that would be one half m times v initial in the y direction squared is equal to the final potential energy. And so this would be one half times the mass. The mass is given as 0 0.193 kilograms. The initial velocity in the y direction would be the initial velocity, 31.45 meters per second squared, times the sine of the angle of 47.84 degrees. And that has to be squared as well. So that's the initial velocity in the y direction squared, initial velocity times the sine of the angle you square that, you get 1 half mv squared, and that should equal the potential energy. All right, 47.84, take the sign, we square that, times 31.45 squared equals, then times 0.5 and times 0.193 equals, and we have an initial potential energy, or final potential energy of 52 Point four joules. Now let me try that one more time to make sure I did not make that mis any mistakes. Let's see. I'm hoping I was this the right velocity. I can't remember. Was this the right velocity? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we can work backwards. We can take this here. So we take 95 and divide by the cosine of theta, which is the cosine of 47.8. 8, 4, take the cosine of that, equals, and then divide by 4.5 equals, I get 31.45, so that is correct, that's the sign of the angle, so let me do one more time, 47.84, take the sine of that, sine, square that, times 31.45 squared equals, divide by 2, and times 0.193 equals, and I get 52.4 joules, so that must be the potential energy when it reaches the maximum height, so therefore that's the maximum potential energy gained by this projectile, and that is how that is calculated. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sure that a viewer would tell me that I forgot to do that. <laughs> I was happy to say it. <laughs>